It's good to have you here for a masterclass video. And today we're going to talk exclusively about sphagnum moss. First a little theory, after which we will be moving on to the practical side of the subject. My example for this masterclass is a reed stem epidendrum and it arrived in my collection in June of 2022. It came with some loose, fresh sphagnum moss and it was just beginning to grow roots and the new growth that we will see later on was just a tiny little offshoot little nub that could have been mistaken for a spike. That's how small it was. Protecting the base for the transport and the shipping, it came with some loose and fresh, meaning live sphagnum moss. I specify live because the sphagnum moss was harvested while alive and has never been treated or dried as what we can buy commercially. So, have you ever wondered if there's a difference in pH between live sphagnum moss and the treated dry sphagnum moss when it comes to use that on our orchids? If so, let me tell you that they both have the same pH and that is 7. If your mind has already jumped ahead and you are wondering about peat moss, I will get to that shortly. But when I say the pH is the same between live sphagnum moss and the dried stuff being 7, I am going by fresh out of the bag sphagnum moss and not one that has been in a pot for a considerable amount of time. And the reason I want to specify that is because of what will follow in this theoretical part of the masterclass. But to give you an indication of where we are headed in this video, let's consider some comparisons. Sphagnum moss is natural in pH, whereas peat moss is acidic and high in tannins. Sphagnum moss has the characteristics of water retention, whereas peat moss can be up to 70% water. Sphagnum moss is long fibered as opposed to peat moss, which is compact. Sphagnum moss should be sold pure. Sometimes there is a little other plant material in it, but for the most part it is pretty clean and pure sphagnum moss. Whereas peat moss contains a mixture of organic materials, including moss, decaying plant matter and dead insects. When it comes to use with the orchids, sphagnum moss is used in many different ways. It's there to line baskets. It is used as a potting media exclusively or added into media mixes to allow for a more water retentive climate in the pot, as opposed to peat moss which is often used in potting and garden soils. And one more thing, this is not to go against anyone who uses peat moss for the culture of specialized orchids, but while on the subject of comparing mosses, I have to point out that sphagnum moss is carefully harvested to ensure the regeneration of bogs, a cycle which typically takes five to six years. Even though it sounds sustainable, that is still a long time, but when we compare that to peat moss, on the other hand, being the layer of decaying, water-saturated sphagnum moss that has sunk below the surface acting as the foundation of swampland it was formed during the course of thousands of years harvesting peat moss is not a sustainable practice harvesting peat moss requires digging up bogs which destroys the potential for regeneration of the swamp seeing as i was comparing the two i felt it was important to add that because if we want to continue to have access to high grade sphagnum moss then we cannot be digging up peat moss Taking the latter will destroy the chance of maintaining the former. So with that being said, let's talk about the sphagnum moss we have in our pots and our new orchid comes from the nursery and is potted up in pure sphagnum moss. If you have an orchid that comes in a pot and the media is sphagnum moss only, you cannot really gauge how long that moss has been in the pot. Ideally, you need to check the pH of the pot and I will link a video in the description where I show how you can do that. Let's say though you don't have the time to be doing the soaking, the measuring, the comparison, etc. to gauge the pH in the pot. Then the following guidelines will ensure that your orchid will be fine while you wait for new roots to grow or root tips to be in active growth prior to repotting. Know that from the moment sphagnum moss gets potted up and watered, decomposition starts. And if we were to just leave it as is, eventually after many, many years, it breaks down and turns into what is essentially peat moss. That normally doesn't ever occur in the orchid hobby, but just to explain the cycle from what sphagnum moss is to what peat moss is, because it will be relevant at further down the line here. So we're not going to be sitting around for years watching sphagnum moss turn into peat moss, but the decomposition of the fresh sphagnum moss will start immediately and the decomposed pieces of the moss will start to compact. At first, slowly, but the longer the orchid is in the pot, 
this process will accelerate. This closes off any additional air pockets around the roots, retaining more moisture than necessary. This can lead to root rot. The key word here being can lead to root rot, not will lead to root rot. So the only surefire way to prevent having to deal with these issues, as we know, is by repotting far more frequently than you would if you were using a more traditional orchid mix. But if your new orchid is not growing new roots or has the root tips extending, then I always say hold off on repotting even if you don't know how old the moss is in the pot and you feel that it is very compact. By doing the following, you can rest assured that you can wait for the right time to repot and avoid shocking your new orchid and sending it into setback or stalled mode or to the point of no recovery at all. Because when it comes time to water, flush or fertilize your orchid, you can up the pH to counteract the possibility of the moss in the pot already being acidic. Now, I'm going to ask you to think worst case scenario because I want to run some numbers by you. So, worst case scenario. Consider the pH in your pot to be close to that of peat moss. Peat moss has a pH of 3.0 to 4.0. Again, I'm not saying that is the pH of your new orchid that arrived in sphagnum moss only. Clearly, you have moss in your pot and not peat moss. But if you do not know how long your orchid has been in that moss and you don't have active root growth to repot without shocking the orchid, then anything you provide for the orchid in form of nutrients or just a flush, the pH of those solutions has to be much higher than any nutrient chart for maximum nutrient absorption advises. If you normally pH at 6.5, you will have to go to at least 7.0, even up to 7.5 for your solution to then have the pH that allows for nutrient uptake. Please know that I'm going as low as 4.0 because I always like to consider worst case scenario. If your pot were at 4.0, you would see roots already struggling. So that is an extreme range. And just for purposes of explaining how low the pH of the pot can be compared to new moss. Add to that, the pot will stay wet for however long it takes in your climate to dry out, meaning that the pH you poured into the pot will not remain the same. Instead, it will drop while the pot is wet, which sounds scary if I just left that statement out on its own. But you can also make that pH dropping in the pot while the moss is wet work in your favor because you can target the pH swing for macronutrient uptake as well as micronutrient uptake with a single watering. Usually, orchids we receive in pure sphagnum moss have roots that look amazing and are still viable. The flimsy nursery pot appears to be bulging most of the time. All is good in the pot. It's easy to see. So while we wait for new root tips, in case there aren't any or new root growth before repotting, let's talk through some pH examples so that you can feel safe in the knowledge that you can wait to repot and still do right by your new orchid. Let's take a more realistic pH and use the calculation of averages. Let us assume the moss in the pot of your new orchid is at a pH of 5.5 and you add any kind of water or nutrient solution at a pH of 6.5. Average that out, your pH in the pot will turn out to be around 5.9, which is fine when targeting micronutrients. Now, Raising the pH to 7 of whatever it is you're pouring into your pot and keeping in mind that the starting pH of the pot is 5.5, your nutrient solution will go up to 6.2 using the calculation of averages. And now we are within the pH range of where optimal nutrient uptake is a little more feasible when considering the macronutrients. However, taking the pH of the liquid you're pouring into your pot into consideration and raising the pH to 7.5, the average pH will be at 6.5 in the pot. Macronutrients are being absorbed and while the pot is still wet, the pH will drop even further as it dries out giving the orchid the chance to absorb micronutrients as well. So I hope that made sense. If not, let me know in the comments. Moving on, once you have repotted your new orchid and if your choice of media is to use sphagnum moss only, you will need to refresh your media every year for the most part because moss staying wet too long will start to degrade faster. And the original neutral pH of 7 that the moss has when you first potted your orchid up 
will start to drop. And that will happen within six months of the repot if you have a very dry climate and your moss is consistently wet. And definitely within eight months if you have humidity in your surroundings and let your moss almost dry out. So by 12 months, it is a good idea to repot your orchid and refresh the moss. Keep in mind that no matter how loosely you use the moss in your pot, it will start to compact. However, that will take more than 12 months for the most part. So you are safe in how you use your sphagnum moss by using the one year repot cycle as a guideline. With your orchid in fresh sphagnum moss, you can pH at the usual 6.5. After six months, however, I would recommend to start raising the pH to seven to counteract any acidity starting in the pot. So with that being said, we've kind of addressed how to take care of your orchid while still in the packed sphagnum moss and we don't know the age and we can still fertilize water, etc. without having to repot immediately giving the orchid time to grow new roots or start growing root tips. But again, you don't know how long your orchid has been in that nasty little flimsy nursery container. And it's possible you're concerned about the dreaded salt accumulation in your pot until you get around to repotting your orchid. On receiving your new orchid in sphagnum moss, whether it is damp or dry, err on the side of caution and soak your pot in plain water for 20 minutes and then flush it through after the soak. Let it get close to drying out and repeat before starting with your nutrient care regime. Many people, myself included, like to give a new arrival a good welcome cocktail of CalMag and seaweed so as to help the orchid to acclimate in its new home. But I do not do that with orchids that come in moss only because as mentioned, I have no idea how long the orchid has been in that pot with that moss and my first port of call is to reset the climate in the pot, cleaning it out, not meaning removing it, but cleaning the media out, so to speak, by soaking it and flushing it through. Meanwhile, I also check the pH after the soak, but again, not everyone has time for that. And that is why I mentioned some tips and guidelines for you to cut that corner and still rest easy that everything will be just fine until new roots are on the way or root tips are growing. A good soak upon arrival with a good flush through with plain water. Let sit, put it on the shelf, let it almost dry out and repeat before you then add any nutrient care regime. I just wanted to repeat that because maybe some of that got lost with what I've just said. And before we get into the potting up of my reed stem epidendrum, let me just add this. Peat moss does not belong in any epiphytic orchid mix. I brought that up because sometimes there is a confusion between sphagnum moss and peat moss and sometimes people think that peat moss is sphagnum moss. It's all a little bit confusing unless you know how peat moss actually forms, develops, grows. And I don't want to go by assumptions. For that reason, peat moss is a factor in this video about sphagnum moss because in actual fact, it is sphagnum moss, but thousands of years old. Anyway, peat moss does not belong in any epiphytic orchid mix. For terrestrials, it is an option because terrestrial orchids do like a little more acidity around their roots. However, I would use it sparingly though because it continues to degrade in pots and once again results in a pH that is far too low for the most popular orchids that we tend to grow, including the terrestrial and semi-terrestrial ones in the majority of private collections. So if this has been helpful and informative so far, and before we move on to the practical side of this masterclass, I would appreciate it very much if you would hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you are not already subscribed. It helps the channel and it helps YouTube to understand that this video has information that is useful and could be of help to others, which could result in YouTube recommending it. Meanwhile, you can also recommend the video if you use the share option, which I also very much appreciate. Thank you. So, potting up time. I'll be right back. Okay, let's pot her up. So since this orchid has been in my collection, I have just been misting the sphagnum moss like this. And as you saw in the previous footage, it has increased in its root growth. If anything, it has grown a lot of roots, which I'm super happy about. And the sphagnum moss being fresh, I could treat it at a pH of seven whenever I added any kind of solution, seven, 6.5, depending on what I was doing with it. And it has worked. So what I'm going to do now, oh, and it's been in this Tupperware all this time. What I'm gonna do now is just remove 
the sphagnum moss because I will be potting up into inorganic media. In a separate video, I am going to be discussing the different kinds of media and how they relate, whether you grow in organic or inorganic media. So watch out for that video. That's also coming up at some point. It just needs to be filmed and edited. <laughs> Ideally, I don't want any organic media in my inorganic pot. Sometimes it's inevitable just to be on the safe side when it comes to protecting the velamen. But you can see how easily this beautiful moss peels off. And in a way, it's a shame that it's going to go. But still, for my climate, my environment, growing an epidendrum, a reed stem epidendrum that is very, very thirsty, is better in LECA and self-watering. Now that is a root system that I've seen in a long time in such a short period of time. Fantastic. Okay, let's not dither. I don't want to keep you too long. Meanwhile, I always fall back on timestamps and if that was the case, I hope you did too. I'm going to be filling up my pot with water first because I do not want to have the Lekka bash the Velamen in any way, shape or form. I want to make sure that that stays nice and protected so that there is no damage to the roots as they continue to grow. We must support a little bit of a pinch. That was a bit too loose for my liking. And let's turn it in such a way that it actually matches the position of the orchid in the pot at the end. Now, let me check how much lecker I'm going to put in based on what I can see. Not the keiki that is growing, but the base of the orchid, and that is just fine. A teeny tiny layer of big lecker at the bottom, just to save on the small lecker, a little bit of crocking per se. Let's fill her up. Just plain RO water. This orchid has had everything it needed up until now. So we'll be conservative with the large lecker. I don't want to get too high. Raising is easy. Lowering, we have to start all over again. Okay. There we go. Let's see that we get it in. I may not even need the support, but as reed stem epidendrums grow, they also get longer and longer. So for eventualities, I've left the stem in there. And now I just want to pour the small lecker very gently into the pot and let the buoyancy of the water do its thing in how it distributes the lecker around the gaps. You can see how easily and gently it falls into place. Absolutely love it. You can't do this with organic media, it would just float on you. But if you're considering lecker and you're repotting, fill up your pot with water first. Be kind to your velamen. And now I'm just going to fill up the reservoir with plain RO water. This orchid has had everything it's needed up until now. We haven't damaged the velamen. Technically, I could put in fertilizer or a supplement solution because there's no damage to the velamen. But I have plain RO water on hand and that's all I'm going to put in there. And just to fill the reservoir, not let the pot settle on the water because we've got roots pretty close to the base. There we go. So. Master class of sphagnum moss, just to get some little basics out of the way. I hope that this was helpful. Any questions you may have with regards to a specific case, in your case, for example, let me know in the comments. I'll be so happy to address them and answer them to the best of my ability. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for watching, for your support. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.